controls, you know, we need to have more internal controls. They really took the opportunity and the strengths of their department, I think, to put together where we could move this and where we could really stand in the forefront here. Um, but because this is an audit, my questions are actually posed to the auditor. And, and if you could just really briefly summarize, because I know we have to get on. The first is I'm curious about internal audit's opinion of this response and whether or not it's adequate. The second question I have will be how can we continue is from an internal audit perspective to track remediation on this because clearly there are problems that need to get better. Madam Chair, Council Member Palmasano. Um, as was mentioned, we're actually really enthusiastic about a response like this. Um, typically audit responses put Band-Aids on things and Band-Aids fall off. Um, I appreciate the clerk's approach to trying to not reinvent, but strategize on how to handle the, the findings that we came forth with um, and to take it to the next level. Because it, I think there's a, a huge opportunity for us to take information governance and records management to the next level. Um, in exhibit one, I think you guys will see that there is a reconciliation between the specific audit findings and how the clerk would like to address this. Um, we will go through and review their um, their proposal and match it up to the findings and at the next audit committee meeting discuss whether or not we think that's appropriate. And then I would probably recommend following up on this um, per the clerk's approach rather than by how we outlined the findings in the audit report. So we don't have to keep reconciling this going forward. So. Um, Happy to see such a robust and enthusiastic response. Um, it will be a lot of work to make sure that all of this is done, and I'm sure it will take a, uh, a very long time to do it, but we're, we're happy and pleased with what the clerk put forward. That concludes my questions by uh, Chair Glidden. and I'm open to what how you feel we best move forward. Okay, I appreciate that. And uh, so I don't think there's any action that needs to be taken. That's just uh, the nature of your committee and uh, how you're receiving further information. Um, I did want to uh, kind of walk through for council members uh, what's the suggested uh, next step. Uh, we have uh, a receive and file, of course, of this report. And then the clerk has outlined some steps that, that they are suggesting, which include preparing an ordinance for an enterprise information governance policy to refine business requirements and develop a request for proposals for a centralized system for tracking review and processing for public data requests in a centralized review and redaction system and to submit additional resource requests as part of the 2017 budget process. I have a, a little bit of a, a tweak on that direction um, and I've discussed it with Mr. Carl. I have also um, discussed this with um, kind of, I think his two key partners from other charter department heads, which would be the city attorney and uh, the city coordinator. And so uh, I, I think really the next step is we uh, need to put this back to a key top level uh, multi-department team to review the clerk's response moving forward is going to mean that we need to get the enterprise, not just understanding this is a good approach, but how, what would be their involvement in moving this forward and making sure we're really working together to identify how would you draft an ordinance? Is that, you know, uh, moving forward on that approach if that is the best approach and some of these other things that are more about how do we identify uh, best next steps in the short term and then the longer term. And I just want to acknowledge too that Councilmember Andrew Johnson and Councilmember uh, Palmasano have both expressed uh, high interest in being connected with that group and then helping move forward any actions, including authoring ordinances or other things as they move forward. So my direction is going to be for uh, the city clerk to help work with the city attorney and city coordinator to pull together an appropriate uh, work team to review in more detail the report and identify the plan that incorporates your suggested directions on moving forward. So with that, any questions uh, on that? I'm not seeing any, so all in approval, please say aye. 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 Opposed, and that item moves forward. 
Uh, Mr. Carl. Mr. Madam Chair, with your indulgence, I, I want to take a moment because they're here. They often are behind the scenes. The records and information management team led by Kristen Rummelhoff, our assistant city clerk, Josh Schaefer, our city records manager, Kristen Olson, our data practices coordinator, and Bob McCune, our uh, record center coordinator. They are a terrific team and they're the ones who uh, make this work happen on behalf of the clerk's office, but more importantly, on behalf of the entire city. Thank you. So thank you for that and thank you for acknowledging everybody by name so that we can be introduced to you and thank you for your work. Um, we have, I have to receive and file and so I'm just gonna head ahead and do that. All in approval, please say aye. 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 Opposed and Councilmember Johnson, Quick, quick on the floor because I had promised folks that we were going yes, to leave. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to say mm -hmm. thank you to everybody who put this together. It's very great work, detailed work, and uh, and I look forward to working with you on it further. Thank you very much. So I had uh, promised that we would conclude our meeting at noon knowing that there were others who had uh, commitments um, at noon. I might just ask as we are concluding, is there any action item that anyone would like to highlight for us? Because uh, there is still um, something that may happen at the council meeting or just you have a major item you wanna make sure that we are noting. So um, council member Johnson, uh, Pres council president Johnson, too many Johnsons. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair, and I'm just going to um, um, express my dismay, uh, and I actually had a conversation with um, Councilmember Gordon yesterday, um, that we are hurrying down the road of imposing a plastic bag ban in our city without uh, involving at all uh, the industry uh, that um, serves a, a number of our residents, and I'm particularly talking about grocery stores. Um, you know, I'm probably the only council member up here who doesn't have a grocery store uh, in her ward. I don't have a single grocery store. Uh, we have one large grocery store in North Minneapolis, Cub on Broadway. And Cub um, struggles. Uh, Cub is part of the uh, Jerry's um, umbrella. Uh, Cub, for history's sake here, uh, Cub uh, replaced Target, who walked away from North Minneapolis uh, many years ago, this, the land sat Bacon, and finally Cub came in and opened a grocery store. Uh, it has never been profitable. Councilmember Yang and I have met uh, with, tar with uh, Cub uh, executives, tried to be helpful to them to you know, mitigate some of the circumstances that they find themselves in, including um, at this particular <laughs> store, a uh, $250,000 bill every year for uh, security. And you know, grocery stores have a one to 2% profit margin. So you have to sell a lot of groceries to uh, cover that $250,000 of security. So uh, in a meeting uh, the other day with uh, the retail grocers, um, I had people from Cub, I had people from Kowalski's, um, uh, Lunds and Byerly's. Um, the uh, manager from Jerry's was there and he mentioned to me, you know, I'm, I, we run the, the Broadway store and you know uh, the challenges we have. And I said, yes, because I've been involved in, again, long, long time conversations about this. Um, uh, he pointed out to me that, you know, with uh, the idea that uh, people couldn't use plastic bags and that they would be charged uh, for a paper bag uh, that does not cover the cost, a nickel doesn't cover the cost of um, a paper bag for a cub. They, their cost is, I think, 11 cents. Um, and then the provision, of course, that uh, people on economic assistance um, don't uh, have to pay at all, which I don't have an objection to, but it's um, it, for that particular store, that's another large group of customers. So uh, this could put them over the edge. And uh, as I look at the people that testified um, at the public hearing, I see uh, absolutely no one uh, from North Minneapolis. And I see one person from the Retail Grocery Association that was allowed to uh, Testify. I guess they probably could have had more people there, but uh, in any case, um, I, I went to Cub. I've been to Cub twice th uh, this week. And last night when I was there, as I was walking out, um, I just looked at uh, the people that are coming in and out of the store. And what I noticed um, is that uh, there are uh, people that have large um, uh, shopping carts full of groceries, um, you know, probably like 10 plastic bags you know, uh, holding groceries. And I think sometimes we forget that there are people in this community that shop uh, in a way that maybe some of us now that we don't have big families anymore, don't shop, you know, you, you, you go to the store more often. 
Well, the people that use the Cub store, the one grocery store in North Minneapolis, I think go there as I look at people checking in and out um, and do their big grocery shopping, you know, in one uh, visit. And then uh, frequently, you know, call a cab or uh, a relative or a friend uh, picks them up uh, at the grocery store. We are gonna severely inconvenience those people uh, with uh, this plastic ban. And I fear uh, that this will uh, result in the closing of the Cub store. Not to mention that I am extremely distressed that our professional staff, we have a full sustainability department in this city. They were not involved at all in the development of this ordinance. Now, it would seem to me that when we're trying to get to a zero waste city that we would look at and involve the professional staff that's charged with this kind of uh, investigation uh, uh, and work in our city, but no, we didn't. <coughs> And so we're gonna move forward um, with uh, the information that's presented by the advocates who want to uh, ban plastic bags with absolutely no input from the other side of the equation. And I think that is really unfortunate. I think it's gonna have unintended consequences. I think the measurement, which could have come from professional staff, of uh, the environmental consequences of moving to paper bags or these reusable bags uh, for people uh, have not been proven or documented. If you read the literature, there are a lot of conflicting, uh, there is much conflicting information about the efficacy of these kinds of bans. And so uh, I really think it's unfortunate that this council, again, uh, time after time, meeting after meeting, puts the hammer down on business in this city and then professes to be pro-business. We really want businesses in this city. My observation is that we are hamstringing businesses in this city and not listening to them. And I wish, I'm, I'm gonna move for a delay tomorrow, I'm gonna ask for a direction, uh, Friday, I'm gonna ask for a direction that sends this matter to our professional staff in the sustainability office and our recycling office to be able to look at information that's out there and make a professional recommendation about how this city should move forward. And I, I hope that I can get people's support. I think that it's important that we have more discussion about this and look at more information. I'm told this morning, I was with a constituent this morning who told me she got a call yesterday from a 507 uh, area code. And um, they asked her, uh, um, uh, what do you think about the plastic bag ban in Minneapolis? And she said, I don't ordinarily answer calls that I don't <coughs> recognize, but she said, I have friends and it's apparently it's Rochester area. And she said, um, uh, uh, she said, well, I don't really know what I think about it. She said, I haven't paid enough attention to it. And they said, well, would you like to be transferred to Council Member Johnson's office because she's your council member. So there's, uh, you know, there's a, a movement, um, a funding stream, that kind of thing that's pushing this. And I think we should have at least the opportunity to hear from the other side of the equation and have, again, our professional staff evaluate this proposal. And so that's what I'm gonna move on Friday. I don't, I don't say anything more, keep people going here. Thank you. Council Member Gordon. Thank you very much. I just um, don't wanna take a lot of time responding, but I thought that I better respond to a couple things. Um, first of all, the, uh, the five cent um, paper bag is a, is a minimum expectation. So certainly the stores that wanna recover the full cost of their paper bags can do that. Um, also, the uh, requirement not to charge the fee from people on EBT or WIC, that's, a, um, that's an option that we're saying we're not going to require the stores to charge that fee, but if they chose to, they could potentially do that as well. Um, I also just wanted to emphasize that this um, matter was vetted thoroughly and um, in great detail with staff as well as with community and businesses. I actually met... Um, uh, twice with the Minnesota uh, Grocers Association, which actually includes only some of the grocery stores, and also engaged in a conference call to address some of the concerns that were were raised by um, the uh, uh, plastic bag lobby that seems to, some people have moved into town from Chicago for this and brought up a lot of issues that weren't very accurate about some of the, some of the things I was saying, but I was also happy to meet with um, and did meet and with my co-author and others with the plastic bag industry lobbyists um, more than once. Also met with the uh, paper bag 
um, lobbyists and I think that we listened and worked out a number of matters. One of the things that we've made sure to do is push off implementation of this already. We've delayed it until uh, a full year with um, a staff direction that will be coming forward on Friday as well to uh, create a work group to look at implementation, timeline, enforcement, and how that's going to all roll out. I also uh, think there might be some mis um, misinformation about the involvement of staff. We uh, had um, several meetings with the staff team that we put together to look at this. Staff from sustainability, regulatory services, solid waste and recycling, licenses and consumer services, and health. We also uh, have the city's attorney office there to help us uh, work on um, something that I believe was a consensus position of all staff that was workable and we could move forward on. Um, and uh, we're prepared to do that. Um, this was a recommendation that did come through sustainability through their uh, SEAC, the SEAC Environmental Advisory Group. Um, it's true that they weren't asking to lead on it and it wasn't a recommendation coming from them. Clearly this is something that was initiated by Councilmember Warsami and I in response to um, demands and requests that we were hearing from our community to do something about this problem. Um, and so we are, uh, I think um, the, the policy is good and we already have uh, the implementation date is set back and we have some structure in place so that we can make sure that when we come forward with this, we'll certainly look at enforcement and implementation. The plan is to include the Grocers Association as well as Aldi's who isn't part of it, Whole Foods who isn't part of it, two stores that already aren't using plastic bags as well as the other um, um, the co-ops in the city that aren't already. We actually heard from three or four businesses at the public hearing that were all supportive of the proposal. Um, we did hear from some, some associations that weren't, and we certainly heard from the um, um, lobbyists from the, the bag industry. So I just wanted to try to set that straight, and I will um, try to share more information with my colleagues uh, about the work that went into this. Um, SEAC looked at it for more than a, a year, and as you recall, we introduced it in, in August. We also did some extensive outreach with businesses, offered to meet with every business association. I went to several of those businesses. I went to neighborhood associations as well, gathering input. A lot of the input we got wasn't not to do this at all, but it was to look at the exemptions and those kinds of things in the timeline, and I believe we incorporated many of those changes into the ordinance. Councilmember Fry. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Um, so for, first off, I, I really appreciate all of the work that both council members Borsami as well as uh, Gordon have done uh, here. And I also understand the sentiment that Council President Johnson put forward regarding the North Minneapolis Cub. Um, and I was one that I did vote for uh, the ordinance at the committee level uh, and do support the efforts to minimize waste, particularly on the downstream side. I simultaneously expressed concern about the additional carbon footprint on the upstream side. And, I just wanted to say that I would, you know, I, I would be, uh, I would like to, would be open to all alternatives that actually get a ultimately bigger win, uh, specifically for the environment. Okay, thank you. I'm not seeing any more comments, and I'm not seeing anybody else uh, come forward with an item they want to <laughs> ensure we are alerted to. So with that, I believe we've concluded our business, and we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.